Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Well, it is uh, 23 hours and 20 minutes into the uh, 17th day of November 2021. And we're beginning our observation. Oh. We're beginning our observation. Oh, sorry about the yawn. It's quite warm out here, it's actually. There's a fair bit of wind, but it's actually quite warm out. Mm. Mm. And it's about 60 degrees tonight, so I don't need the hood. And last night, it was about 30 degrees outside, uh, Fahrenheit. So I needed the hood because it was freezing. Uh, this, it, this jacket keeps me warm, and yay for that. Uh, anyways, uh, Lionel didn't post again tonight, today, uh, but, uh, guess who's back? Yvette Carnell, and so I began watching her, watch her, uh, her vlog. Uh, she does a similar type of thing, a call-in thing. Uh, except, instead of doing, uh, instead of doing comments and reading the comments, uh, she actually has people call in. Which is quite interesting, different, different, different than Lionel. Uh, she came from a, a Democrat background. She tried the left, but the left kind of trounced her out, and now she is more back on the independent side, I think. But she is still pretty much uh, looking for reparations. And here, a particular issue is known as ADOS reparations for ADOS. ADOS are the American descendants of slavery. Well, here's the problem with ADOS. Is that ADOS assumes that the suffering of American slaves was isolated to American slaves. But that's not the case. The United States has been, in terms of its imperial um, existence, I'm just going to fix this up a little bit more, has been globally abusing people. So the problem with ADOS is global. It's not simply simply it's not simply American in, in some respects. I mean they did, say, they did the same thing in South America. All you have to do is look at the School of America, uh, School of the Americas, and you understand you'll be good to but you'll, you'll begin to understand this, that this was not simply a local thing, a local phenomenon that did... I mean, this is why you have... A, why do you have all these people coming up from Honduras? Why do you have all these this, this sort of traffic into into the United States the so-called so -called illegals? I don't have a problem with the illegals. Uh, Republicans do, and other, not, uh, other people have a problem with the illegals. I don't have a problem with the illegals. Uh, because... The United States has been meddling in doing regime change on a global basis, and here, what they they talk about the terrible things that uh, this was the callers that came in and called in how horrible Trump was, but they couldn't give me any specifics as exactly what he was horrible about. Uh, he did move the uh, the office for uh, black colleges into the White House and gave them more credentials than they did before. Uh, uh, he didn't impose. He didn't impose any lockdowns. He didn't uh, force vaccin do any uh, force vaccination. So the thing is, is that a large chunk of the things that they're sort of complaining about was not never really Trump, even though the impression from the mainstream media was was that that was that was. That was they make that appearance, that sort of creation, the created reality was that this was all Trump, but it's not all Trump. But then this, it comes out just like the dossier, the, the Steele dossier. There was nothing there. They, 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 it's now being shown as a fake. And the thing is, people don't realize the court system, this is what, uh, what uh, Lionel's kind of talking about, is this Rittenhouse case. And he's kind of waiting for the decision, for the, the the decision to come back from the uh, jurors. The problem is, is that you can cherry pick things. 
It doesn't necessarily have to be one thing or the other. The, United, the justice system is fundamentally dead. There is no real justice anymore. It has basically gone into an arbitrary situation where you can choose one job, judge who is sympathetic to Republicans, another who is sympathetic to the Democratic left, and this is the way it exists. The whole concept of fundamental justice is completely gone. Justice is not balanced. It's not fair. It's not, uh, in many cases, realistic. It creates its own reality through these various different procedures. This is why theorists who sit down and study the theory and the idea of law, as soon as they get into the uh, trial situation, are sorely mistaken because they, 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 the, the situation isn't any way it isn't any way that they thought it was going to be. It wasn't as described in the books. That's the difference between theory and reality. This between rhetoric and reality. Rhetoric are the nice things you say, and you know the great cause, the great campaign. And of course, the Democrats are great great at that, and they create the illusion that they care. Well, the callers who were called in talking about the Biden election, and because of the whole, they, they were talking about the Virginia election why it went the way it went. Well, most of them called in saying they regretted voting for uh, Biden because they didn't expect Biden to do what he's done, which is basically nothing for them anyways. But in many cases, the black community is, is, is significantly worse off than it was before under Trump. You know, a large chunk of the, the black businesses are losing their business because they're not, they're not vaccinated. The blacks don't want to get vaccinated. Uh, they're finding out that the that they're, that and this is what Yvette Carnell has been pointing out all along: is that there's a difference between African American and Black American. Black American Americans aren't Africans; they're Black. They're they're Americans, but they have a Black color to them. This is this is true for the Negroes. Negroes are simply the Black Americans. The, the, the Negro is more a more fancy term for it, and uh, Negro comes from the Latin and the Spanish, El Negro. Right? That's what you have. In, you have the black or the dark river in South America, Rio Rio Negro. That's 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 where the term comes from. That's so it's it's a more egalitarian uh, type of word than just simply calling a person black. But they're fundamentally Americans. They, they, it, and so you get you, what you, we're getting is you're getting a different perspective now. You're getting actually, for, you know, instead of. Um, I have a black friend. Well, this is the black voice. Or, or should I say a black voice. Let me correct that. It's an a black voice. Because she allows you to hear the views that come out of uh, the black community. Now, she had, uh, before when she had was did this, oh, she had a lot a lot better call of uh, people who were calling in, but the things that have She's starting up again, so it's going to take a while for people to call back in to sort of really develop a rapport where she can get into uh, heavier stuff, more of a litmus test of what's going on within the community. And this is why, as you said, you have to go get different perspectives. This is how you move yourself outside the matrix, outside of what we call the standard perspective. And then... But the thing is, most people don't do that. They, they, they oh, I'll go to one paper, I'll go to another paper. In other words, they stay within uh, the called the uh, created sphere. All papers are, and all the sorts of this type of media are known as they're basically part of the created sphere, uh, the created sphere, the created reality. Because they all take off of Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays is the key to all of this. This is why I say this is why you have to look at Edward Bernays. His points of view, his connections, are with Anna Freud and Sigmund Freud. Understand this, and then you can begin to understand how Sigmund Freud, the concept of Sigmund Freud, the herding of animals, are, 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 comes into comes into society. Without this understanding, then you're not understanding anything. And the thing is, she was saying that the 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 the, the, the ADOS, the American descendants of slaves, uh, they're the ones who founded the Democratic Party. Well, that's not true. <laughs> this is gonna, 
kind of ask it sort of answers the question of why the Democrats don't do you know for the African community what they do for other communities. And that's because they expect these blacks to be slaves. The Democrat Party was founded. There's a storm coming in. I've been watching this on the satellite, waiting for this to come in, and well, here it is. And it's the te- because the temperature is now starting to drop again. Uh, the warm air came in he- heavy with uh, moisture, and now as the temperature is starting to drop, the rain is coming in. The wind is unbelievable. The clouds are low enough that I can't see, even though I can hear planes, I can't see them. So I use I use the aircraft to I use the aircraft to determine the altitude of the clouds because you can if you know where the flight paths are, flight path if you know where the flight paths are, you can sort of determine the altitude of the plane. You can uh, in terms of their approach, and then you from there you determine the altitude of the clouds. This is kind of. Uh, uh, Plain sight, dead reckoning. If you will, if you, uh, 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 you know, naked eye, let's say, naked eye, dead reckoning. In other words, I'm not using a telescope. I'm not using anything to measure the altitudes. I'm using a comparison in, in terms of the clouds. And then once I know the plane, you can go, you do that online. Uh, you can come out here and so okay, there's one plane coming in from one approach. There's another one taking off. There's another one going north. Another one going south. And you can tell by the altitudes of the planes. Uh, in these so-called flight paths, because uh, they give you an altitude for the flight path, uh, that um, you can now tell where the where the clouds are in terms of the height of the clouds, in terms of the altitude. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, a side note because well, this is what we're doing. I I'm, I'm up here doing observation. You know, why do I look so creepy? Because particularly if I put the hood up, here's the hood. You put the hood up here. There we go. See, this is, this is what people refer to. Hey, he's a creepy dude. The creepiest guy on the internet. Well, why? Because this looks a lot like Illuminati stuff. <laughs> this is this is the, you know, the whole Masonic stuff, the hood, the covered eye, and the whole bit. But I'll deal with that in the uh, Nosey's vlog. But for now, it's the issue of, if you want... There are no, and this is what they're bringing up. They are frustrated that there's no good choices for black people to vote for, and they're always talking about things of how the government should be serving them, which is true. Government should ideally should be ser- serving you, but the reality is that the governments rarely ever do serve people. They're self-serving. It doesn't matter whether Republican, Democrat, or whatever. They are self-serving. So. Seeing this within history, my choice of of voting choices because I do vote in the American elections. I'm up here in Canada, but I'm an American. Uh, uh, in terms of my actual birth, I was born in Boston. Uh, my parents are of uh, Syrian and Asiatic Greek descent. Uh, I ended up moving up here to Toronto and living in. Uh, the community, the Greek community, the, uh, the, these were people who were themselves, and my uncle, the way we sort of associate is that they become my uncles, they become family. And so these uncles that were newly coming over from Greece, this is back in the 70s, they were, uh, they were sharecroppers. They were ADOS. They were, <laughs> you know, well, no, they weren't ADOS. They weren't descendants of slaves. They were slaves. And the thing is, is that if you see olive oil and stuff like that, a large chunk of that olive oil and the olives, the, the, the black olives, that all comes from Greece. The honey. And what happens is Greece, as a government, took over everything. And the, the farmers had to give X amount to export, and only a certain amount was held, was held back to, uh, to, uh, for the people there in the city, uh, in the environment. So under the socialist government, and this is so, these are socialist government. The government controls everything. They are the business. They are the economy, and there is no economy outside of the government. This is planned, planned economy. This is socialism, and this is the way they existed. So, what happens is they had to learn as slaves 
And of course, they were serving white governments. They were sort of vassal states of the European ideal, which was all white at the time. Uh, they served them dutifully, but they also there was an undercurrent. They learned how to get around their corrupt governments. And, this, and then she, there was one why do the immigrants do what they do? They come in, they, they, they stay for a little bit in some of these, these poor areas, and then they leave and they forget about it because this is the way they were brought up. This is the way they existed. They understood that they could not depend on the government. They had to depend on themselves. They had to create a, they had to create a community, and this is what ADOS is starting to do, the, 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 the black community uh, of ADOS, because the Syrians were ADOS as well. They, 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 they were, although actually, they were slaves. They weren't ADOS, they were slaves. Uh, the Greeks were slaves. The... Uh, uh, at some point in time, the Irish Catholics were slaves, and not only to the, to the uh, papacy, because the papacy created slavery uh, in terms of U the European understanding. Your, the papacy created Europe, and it also created the slave, the slave mentality, the, the, the whole concept that slavery was okay. Uh, prior to the papacy, uh, the Christian uh, emperors of the, Roman, uh, of the real Roman Empire uh, were all ordered by uh, by the original uh, uh, by uh, Emperor Constantine to free the slaves that any of the slaves or slaves slaves or servants that they had had to be free because under the eyes of the early early Christian Church we were all equal we we're all brothers and sisters brothers and sisters and we, you cannot enslave one of your family you can't you can't enslave a brother you can't enslave a sister. So uh, all slaves were either ordered to be adopted by the family or released. And this is, this is what happened. It was under the new papacy that came in around 1000 AD, and they forced their way in by, they, through, with, war, with war. They attacked and conquered these particular areas physically uh, that allowed them to control the Vatican. And their perspective was that, that God was an all-powerful War God and, and the God, uh, you know, God Almighty, and this is why you have the conquistadors and the um, and the uh, crusaders on horseback with these these tunics, like dressed like monks, but they had these massively long swords in the shape of shape of a cross. They were killing people in the name of the Lord. So this is, you know, they were dispatching them to heaven, as it was as it was as, as it was written. And so what happens is slavery comes back in because everything is everything belongs to God. The people are created by God. So it's, it's, he's their people. And who became the slaves down below? Well, they're the ones who were not properly baptized. They did not really live a proper life. These were the underclass. These were people who were considered to be untouchable, who had committed the, one of the seven deadly sins. By the whole, if you look at the history of who these people were, by going into the history of the Borgias, the Borgias, you understand that the, the, the royalty kind of exempted themselves from these particular rules and used the church uh, to enforce their will, their imperial will within, within their structure. And this is how you end up having these global empires. But as I said, the global empires... Uh, of Europe didn't emerge until about 70. They started emerging about 1700 AD, and then within 200 years from uh, 1700 AD to about 1900 AD, the 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 empires blossomed into what they are, what they are today, to what we're seeing now as the decline of empire. And the thing is, you can add, is that you, there, there are history books you can look at, but my choice is to go and find. The uh, some of these uh, magazines and journals that were time around the time you have printing from about 1600 AD, you have printing so you can find these manuscripts in certain archives. They're not necessarily listed, but they're there, and you can sort of spend your time looking around for these archives. There are different ways of doing studies, uh, because uh, with YouTube, YouTube is another large archive dump, uh, and it's not necessarily a fee free for all, but it's there's no organization to, uh, there's no, uh, like a, there's nothing like a library organization uh, to YouTube, but you can sort of find things on there if you know how to look for it, and you can go and look and sort of 
really do a a study on on European history and how it evolved. To understand there is no European history. <laughs> There's no real there is no real European history. There is no German history. There's no you know the Germanic tribes. Well, that's that's a creation. It's not reality. It's a creation. But most people don't understand that. Again, it takes a long time to go through these things. It's, you know, why am I a creepy nerd? Because I spend all my time studying. I don't have a social life. This is what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. This is who I am. And that's about the end of it. I, I don't mind being like this. I don't have a problem because, you know, I, I, I was never a part of a kid to begin with. I never really fit in with society. I never fit in with the crowd, and because I, I could never, I could never simply do something because it was trendy. Uh, I tried it for a bit, maybe or one, you know, and then it just didn't work out, and I went back to being who I was. And so this is kind of uh, the sort of the situation now. Is you know, with, well, he's a creepy. He's the creepiest guy on the engine. Well, okay, yeah, fine. Uh, that doesn't say anything to me. That's not that's not not a qualifier qualifier in terms of who I actually am. It's just some guy who uh, thinks he knows who I am. You you can go into the background of people who post who comment and see what they're about, and you can tell whether they actually have some substance to them or there's no substance to the guy. The guy who's been talking has been sort of uh, sort of. Uh, Behind some of the comments I had doing the posts here, uh, a good, some, behind some of the comments uh, uh, that I talk about, that I replied to, his name his name online is P J Jones. Ah, uh, there's not much there. There's not much really to say about him. There's no depth to anything he produces, and so there's not really much to say. He he is somehow a debunker. But doesn't say how he actually debunks things. There's no fundamental sort of debunking there. He just simply states that he's a he's a, he's a debunker. But I've seen this before. I've seen these so-called debunkers, and there's really nothing to them. They're, they're, they're it's their opinion. You can debunk something from your opinion and say, "Well, this is this is the way I think," and not present any evidence and not show you how you get your work or, or why you came to the conclusion you came to. Uh, I mean, he, I mean, his, his part of his. I think he's a pilot because he shows uh, in the. In, in, he's in an airplane. He's showing that uh, the Earth is round, and he's pointing to on on the thing, the sort of touch screen. It's almost like uh, Google Earth, uh, showing the flight paths and turbulence and so on and so forth. Uh, so he's in the cockpit, showing this, and he's on the screen, showing that this three dimensional Earth thing. And it's basically like Google Earth, but the problem is the Google Earth on the flat, on, on the screen. The screen itself is flat. The image is is basically two dimensional. The third dimension is a is somewhat of a, what we call a projection, or uh, it's not see, it's not really a projection. With it, it, it provides the, exp the the appearance of three dimensional curve without actually being three dimensional. When you're seeing like on your on your on your uh, uh, smartphone screen, go to Google Earth, and you start scrolling around to see all the different features of the Earth, or whatever feature you're interested in. That's the graphic, but the graphic exists within the two dimensional plane, so it appears to be three dimensional, even though it's not really three dimensional. This is and this is the way you have with uh, 3D movies, which is not really three dimensional. But you wear the glasses and you, oh, oh, it looks like a 3D. But it's not really 3D. You can do this with the viewfinder, with called stere stereoscopic view. This is an old method of doing three-dimensional work uh, where uh, cameras were placed uh, side by side, took pictures at two different angles at the same time of the same object. And when you look through them through specialized glasses, you could sort of see that the image was together almost like, like three dimensions. But again, this was not really 3D. These, these were what you call, what you call optical effects. 
so optical effects are not proof of three three dimensions. You have to go into more complicated geometry. I said first Euclidean geometry, then into Pythagorean, where you have to get into calculus, and from calculus you move into uh, uh, the solid geometry. The solid geometry takes you into uh, early Greece, uh, into uh, Plato, and so on and so forth, and you have to look at something called geodesics. This is what gets you into the third dimension in terms of geometry. And you'll see that this concept of a round, of a spherical planet, I'm not saying wrong, round, because round can be flat still. It can be round, but it, it could also still be flat. Uh, the <laughs> Teen Titans go, had the Earth as round, and there's a beast boy who believed the Earth was, a, was actually a pancake. <laughs> and of course, you know, you have to go to the... Uh, the, they went to the edge of the of the, uh, of the earth, uh, and there was the butter wall, and <laughs> it just and they had the oceans of syrup, and you know it, it, they some some kid shows well cartoons used to have, and they still do depending on uh, which ones you want do have some good subtext to them. Uh, the people who do have some sense of humor in there, you can sort of see how their views. Are presented on this, uh, but the, the the guy P.J. Jones pres- provides no evidence that flat Earth doesn't exist. He simply it's his own assertion, his own opinion, which is you know it's okay. I'm not going to argue with that. Okay, it's your opinion. But where have you debunked this? How have you debunked this? Where's where's your calculus? Where's where's your history? And there's nothing there. So one has to say, okay, well, if, this, if, if there isn't any reality to this, you simply bring in your own opinion. How do you then state that you're a debunker other, other than simply stating that you're a debunker? So this is why I don't like really, I don't really like debunking things. I wouldn't say that I'm a debunker or anything like that. I'm an explorer. I'll explore different ideas. I'll explore different points of view. This is why I'm listening to Yvette Carnell. I don't agree with everything that she says, nor do I agree with why not. But you have to have other perspectives in order to understand what's going on. Not just simply your own perspective. But this is something, I guess, if you can't get past my looks or the way I present myself to people, then this is it. But again, this is not a documentary. This is a rough draft essay. Things are starting to come together. There will be eventually be these, these, these documentaries, which are the full essays, presentations, but right now these are the rough drafts. This is the step in from the notes. Anyways, uh, I think that's it for now. We're going to get into the notes vlog next and I will see you uh, after that we'll be doing the uh, transitions vlog. We are Cyborg Alpha Infinite Tween and Middle School for Life.